Hey guys, it's Miharu. While doing research for another big video, I happened upon an interesting subcategory of Spyro-related fan works from the mid-2000s to the 2010s. You have your fan games and your fanfics, of course, but by far the most fascinating to me is fan films. Sure, this has been a pretty common thing for many years now, but it surprised me just how many were planned for Spyro. But I can't talk about that without first mentioning the real Spyro movie. From the Lost Media Wiki, The Legend of Spyro 3D was a planned CGI animated film adaptation of The Legend of Spyro. It was to be produced by Universal Animation Studios and had a set release date of December 2009. It was later pushed back to April 10th, 2010, before being cancelled completely in 2011. Information on the plot of the film has surfaced online, along with the teaser poster, however, no footage has ever made its way to the public. I won't even attempt to summarize the absolute train wreck that was the leaked script, so I'll just leave a link to Travis's video. So, as you can probably imagine, many Spyro fans back then were saddened by the news of the movie's cancellation. They wanted to see their favorite dragon on the big screen, and one way or another, they were gonna make it happen. In fact, some had been planning to make it happen a few years prior. Okay, first of all, please remember that this video is for informative purposes only. For privacy reasons, most names have been changed or omitted entirely. However, if you were involved with any of these projects and do wish to be credited, please leave a comment and I'll add your info to the description. Before I move on to the big name projects that inspired this video though, here are a couple honorable mentions. First is The Legend of Spyro Lost Legacy. Conceptualized in 2008 by a user named DS, this was the first in a series of planned films revolving around the story of legend. They were also allegedly working on a Jack and Daxter film around this same time, but said it got delayed because they didn't have enough voice actors. Ah, the good old days when the only thing you needed to get a movie off the ground was voice actors. Anyway, they claimed to have the script written and most of the animation done, and concluded the release date would be somewhere around summer or fall of 2009. This of course did not happen, and there are no traces of this film ever existing. This next one is really funny to me just because it reminded me of how overly confident I was in my own projects as a kid. October 2008. DeviantArt user VTR posts on the community forums saying they've been given permission to create a movie for the most famous Spyro fanfiction on FF.net. This was The Realms of Chaos. Originally written in 2003, this story took place between the events of Enter the Dragonfly and Season of Flame and featured Ripto as a main character. As for being the most famous fic, I can't say, but well written it was, spanning 15 chapters over two years and receiving over 150 reviews. Clearly this movie was just an extremely ambitious goal by an enthusiastic young fan, cause there was no plan here. From using the fic itself as the script, to laying out ideas for the trailer despite there being no film, and perhaps my favorite, the revelation that they had been working on all of this from their school computer. I really don't want this to sound like I'm making fun of anyone, because I was the same. I can't tell you just how many times I said, I'm gonna do the thing, and just never did it. Anyway, I don't have an exact time frame for when this project died off. It's possible more updates were posted on the website, but that's long gone. Some of you may remember a video I did back in 2020 discussing the abandoned Spyro fan film known as Legacy of Ages, but it's old, unlisted, and not as in-depth as I'd like it to be. So, 2005, fanfiction.net user JQ posts a story called Spyro Dragon of Destiny, which takes place after the events of a hero's tale. It was basically a precursor to the Legend series, with darker tones and themes, but also included a bunch of original characters. A year later, he makes a post on Dark Spyro detailing information about his current project, Legacy of Ages, a trilogy, yes trilogy, of fan films with the first, Secrets of the Mystic Tome, set to release in fall of 2008. Concepts for character redesigns were posted on his DeviantArt page, as well as the lyrics to the supposed theme song, and he even claimed to have contacts in the film industry whom he was trying to get on board for voice work. But it's pretty clear he was running this thing himself. Obviously, this reeked of suspicion from the start, 
But that didn't stop me from wanting in on the action. In 2007, a 15-year-old Miharu auditioned for the role of Carla, Sparrow and Cinder's daughter. And by doing my best adult Cinder impression, I got the part. So what happened? Well, I should note that around the time I auditioned, the release date for the film had been pushed back to 2009. In addition to that, the official Legacy of Ages website had been going through a development hell of its own. Originally scheduled for a late 2007, early 2008 launch, along with the first of five trailers that never came out, it too was eventually pushed back to July of 2010. But, to no one's surprise, was delayed yet again due to an unforeseen computer issue. A month passes and JQ sets a new unspecified launch date of September or October, along with a new film release date of Thanksgiving 2012. Come October 2010, still no sight. Then he disappears from DA for two years. For anyone having a hard time keeping up, let me break it down with this handy timeline. This is where we're at now in the story, and this is where it started. Three years since I auditioned, four since the project was announced, and aside from some concept art and 3D renders of backgrounds, JQ had nothing to show for it. Despite his claim that the films would be so good they would embarrass the official franchise owners. I'd also like to point out that I'm apparently the only person who was ever officially cast, as no other casting updates were ever posted. But if you can believe it, it gets weirder. A look back at JQ's first DeviantArt journal reveals that he apparently owned two companies that at the time were working on some projects that will be part of a massive online TV network in development. He also states that the truth about AMS Inc. is that it had been around for 10 years, but this is the first time he's making its existence public. That means that, at the time of this post, this AMS was founded in 1997. Of course, a quick Google search turns up nothing for either of these supposed companies. He then goes on to say Disney stole his idea for The Lion King 2, which is unrelated, but it makes me laugh. In addition to that, he would often sidestep questions or act in a hostile manner towards those who called him out for not delivering on his promises along with going off on rants about Skylanders. He was dead set on making sure his film received the attention he thought it deserved. And that brings me to Kevin D. Greetings, fans of Spyro the Dragon. I am Kevin D, your new friend and JQ's company spokesman. I will be handling all the Q&As and communications for him, so please address them to me and only me. Now, I am sure you all are wondering why the boss has assigned me to do this for him. Well, the reason is a complicated personal one which I am not at liberty to discuss at the moment. So I advise you guys not to ask. However, I will definitely say it is not because he is too busy or hates you guys. He actually has great respect for all of you. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been assigned to act as a spokesman. These posts started popping up on Spyro Forum in 2011 under the same account, so it turns out that he never really disappeared, he was just masquerading as someone else. I mean, it's very unlikely Kevin was a different person. This spokesman types in the exact same style, doesn't act professionally in the slightest, and basically only exists as an advocate for JQ's big promises. But in any case, back to my side of the story. JQ shows up again on DeviantArt in 2012, where I welcome him back and tell him I've been wondering about my role for quite some time. He then responds with, it's an ongoing work in progress. Sure, February of 2013 would be the last time I'd speak with him, or so I thought. Cut to 2021, eight years after that final journal update. I get a comment on my Legacy of Ages video that reads, Maharu, I owe you and everyone else who has patiently waited on this project a great apology. As your video stated pretty accurately, the movie project was a very ambitious undertaking by a much younger me. Legacy of Ages is and was a project I regret not being able to complete as I originally envisioned it. If you are curious about what happened and what went wrong, then I would be more than happy to explain in depth. As for the Spyro Legacy of Ages project itself, it was put on the development hell shelf. I do want to one day revisit it when I'm in a better financial shape to actually finish it. Needless to say, I was shocked. I didn't think I'd ever get to speak with him again, let alone he'd see the video. He then proceeds to tell me how the project got its start, how he made the mistake of showing Dragon of Destiny to one of his friends in the industry, and how it would all snowball from there. I will continue with more later, I promise. 
It's now 2023, and I'm still waiting on the rest of that story. Why am I not surprised? That's about it for Legacy of Ages. But if you thought that was a wild ride, we're just getting started. Project Frixion. Before I started writing this script, I had no idea this one even existed, and it has quite a history. This story begins shortly after the cancellation of The Legend of Spyro 3D. April 2010, Dark Spyro user we'll call Bunny proposes the idea that, since the movie was cancelled, I think we should make a movie. As in, all of the people on Dark Spyro teaming up to write a script, animate, and create a Spyro movie. It's unlikely anyone will take me seriously, but does someone want to work on this? Okay, already we're off to a great start. Just like the Realms of Chaos before it, there was no plan. All of it was volunteer work and depended solely on the feedback of a community who couldn't even decide what the plot should be. And looking through the rest of this thread, well, it was apparent this was going nowhere fast. At one point, Bunny just straight up left, despite it being her idea, and then came back to ask if it was still going. But then, eight months after that initial post, she arrived. Kira signed on as a character artist in December of 2010. We'll come back to her later, cause things were about to take a surprising turn after the new year. January 2011, forum user Jasper makes his appearance. Hi, I have been watching this forum for a while and have finally decided to get an account here. Actually reading this topic is exactly what caused me to get an account, for I have been wanting to create a Spyro movie. I wish to help develop the story for this movie if I am allowed. As a matter of fact, even before I read this topic, I started writing my own Spyro storyline. However, I believe we should not make the Spyro movie based on the Legend series or the original. We should base it on both. We should make our own Spyro reboot that takes a direction we can all enjoy. As for my experience, I have been designing storylines for various things for a while now, mainly for my own enjoyment, but I would like to use my skills for this. He talks a bit about his ideas for the movie and even posts a resume of his past work. That was all it took. Within the next few hours, he was made a manager by Bunny. You know, the person who left the project but was still somehow allowed to make important decisions. Anyway, Jasper, a newbie to the forum, was now in charge of this fan film, which he would later rename Project Shadow Child. As you can imagine, people were not happy with this, with two outright leaving just after the decision was made. That wouldn't be the last we'd see of them, though. Remember Kira? Well, as it turns out, she didn't take too kindly to the situation either, and just a day later made her own thread. Yes, I know there's a topic about a fan movie, but I have a feeling this may turn out better. I heard there were some people unhappy with the other topic. There will hopefully be less arguments because we'll vote on the things we want, like plot, name, animators, directors, etc. This was the beginning of the project that would come to be known as Frixion. And unlike Shadow Child, the intention for this film was to be a straight adaptation of A New Beginning that stayed faithful to the game's plot while also clearing up inconsistencies. Seems simple enough, right? Well, it was, aside from the fact that there were now two separate fan film topics which caused some confusion amongst forum users. But the two people who had just left Shadow Child were now on board for this. One of them had even been promoted to the director, and tasks were being assigned. The only problem, in their eyes at least, no one knew a thing about 3D animation. So as you can probably deduce, this led to a lot of waiting around and not getting much done. Well, many months passed and the team suddenly found themselves without a director. This is where Skijarma comes in. I actually had the honor of interviewing him for this video, and when asked about how he came to be the new director, he had this to say. The previous director had left the project for reasons I personally do not know or cannot recall. I was interested in participating though, and in my naivety as an inexperienced and ignorant teenager, I thought that the big thing you needed for a movie were 3D models. So I went onto some Blender forums and posted up a listing for someone to be a character modeler. And someone came back, with a render of the titular Spyro in remarkable detail. Now, I can only assume that, as I had actually shown results, the other scattered people on the team figured that I would be of most value in a leadership position. This was, frankly, a terrible idea, looking back on it in retrospect. It was 2011, and I am only 26 years old right now. 
That means I was in the first half of my teen years at the time. I was still getting started in high school. I was oblivious, ignorant, inexperienced, and had no idea what I was doing. But in that same youthful stupidity, I took up the responsibility with gusto and promptly sailed us by the seat of my pants out into the ocean. Well, terrible idea or not, Skajarma was now in charge. And honestly, it seemed to be working out. They now had new members who knew how to work with Blender, and even started up a YouTube channel and a website where updates would be posted. Shadow Child had completely fallen apart as far as I know, and a bunch of people from that group, including Jasper, had begun migrating to Frixion. The first thing you may notice about this project compared to the other ones mentioned in this video is that they were actually showing some progress. Not nearly enough, mind you, but as much as a bunch of high school kids could show, which is more than I could say for something like Legacy of Ages. Unfortunately, the website is no longer operational, but much of the team's work still remains archived. In July of 2012, the official Project Frixion DeviantArt group was founded by Omicron Wanderer. And as you can see, it has quite a packed gallery, featuring scripts, concept art, character models, and more. According to former concept artist The Reptile Girl, aka Mundy, Omicron was the glue that held them all together. A super happy and bubbly person who was very passionate about the project and a great inspiration to Mundy. Her render of the Dragon Temple in particular is extraordinary. Unfortunately, just a year after she joined, Omicron disappeared without a word, leaving the team with one less modeler. Over the course of 2013, progress on the film slowed down immensely and would continue to do so until August, when Skajarma announced he would be stepping down from the project for good. And from there, things would only get worse. November 2013, DeviantArt user Lord takes over as head of Frixion, with user Fro acting as assistant director. So what exactly was the big deal with this? Remember how I said the intention for this film was to be a straight adaptation of A New Beginning? Well, according to Lord, the current script wasn't doing the story justice, so he took it upon himself to do some rewrites. This new opening scene is about twice the length of the one that was written just a year prior and contains some rather interesting additions. Original characters, violence, light swearing, and Ember and Flame. As you can guess, this didn't sit well with certain team members. Skijarma even recalls returning to the group for a short time to express his concern with these changes. I briefly got back into things to scold the new directors and tell them that meddling with the source material like that is precisely the reason why so many video game adaptations failed. To which an apologetic lord had this to say. To be short, I take full responsibility for the madness and chaos going on. I wanted to make this movie more than the game. I saw the vision that Sierra had when they were making those games, and I wanted to bring it to life in the biggest way possible. It was out of sheer love and fandom. It was freedom. I wanted to bring the fantasy to life and make it my own. I can see that people feel very strongly about adding these new characters." Of course, this didn't really amount to anything, as ultimately the decision was made to keep the new characters. Project Frixion was officially under new management, and on New Year's Eve 2013, they released their first and only teaser trailer. Understand that things are now in motion which cannot be undone. Oh boy, where do I even begin? Well, if you ever needed proof that this was being run by a bunch of kids, there you have it. Between the poor sound quality, barely four seconds of animation to showcase, and the proposed release date being 2015, which would give them only a year to get everything finished, it wasn't looking good. And from the new year onward, it would become increasingly clear that this new director was just as unfit for a position of leadership. To Lord's credit, though, he did make several attempts to bring everyone together and explain the importance of teamwork. He was definitely an idea guy, writing up many journals filled with inspirational speeches, giving detailed job descriptions, and even creating an organization chart to keep track of who was doing what. You can tell this was a person who had a lot of faith in this project and wanted to see it through. 
But having too much faith in something can be a problem if you don't know what you're doing. And by the end of January, Frixion had lost two more members, one being Mundy, who frequently expressed her distaste with how things were being run. Now, where have I heard that before? The new guy with big ideas suddenly being promoted to a management position and making unnecessary changes, causing two people to leave. Yes, history really does repeat itself. The rest of 2014 would be the downfall of Project Frixion, as only four months in, Lord himself stepped down as director and switched roles with Fro. If you weren't already rolling your eyes at this roller coaster of a system they had going on, you probably are now. Around this time as well, Fro was attempting to move production over to their new Zeta Boards forum, which no longer exists, claiming DeviantArt was super cool but not fit for business. From that point on, the DA page would receive small updates relating to either the script or team meetings until September, when journals would stop entirely for seven months. So if you found yourself at any point during this wondering what happened to Kira, well, it turns out she was still around. Sorta. After Skijarma took charge, she went MIA for a year, returning in 2013 to assure everyone she hadn't abandoned the project, before promptly leaving again. And though the current team was not active on Dark Spyro, this original forum topic was still ongoing. It was mostly filled with questions and concerns regarding the state of the project, but just a couple days after the journal stopped on DA, Kira made a post, expressing interest in returning to the group. Unsurprisingly, nothing ever came of this. In April of 2015, a desperate effort to revive the project would be made by former creative consultant Shadow Sean, but to seemingly no avail. I was, however, able to speak with Sean about his involvement and found out that, despite two years of radio silence on DA, he had actually managed to keep things going on Facebook well into 2017, with another member working on some pretty impressive Blender animations. But alas, life got in the way, and eventually Project Frixion was no more. So, where are they now? Well, believe it or not, the group is still very much alive, just under a different name. In March of 2017, former member Rykenator founded Convexity Studios, which focuses on smaller Spyro-related projects instead of full-length movies. They operate primarily on Discord now, but also have a YouTube channel if you want to check it out. And that's the story of Legacy of Ages and Project Frixion, perhaps the most ambitious ideas for Spyro films I've ever seen. The Legend era from 2006 up until the release of Skylanders was a crazy time and had a huge impact on the community, for better or for worse. And I think the cinematic feel of those games is ultimately what ignited the flame in so many of these young creators and aspiring movie directors at the time. It was a project that could best be described as a collection of passionate teenagers coming together to daydream. It was a fun social experience for us on the team, but it never would have gotten properly off the ground as an actual movie. Not with us. Not with how we were running things. That being said, I don't regret participating. It was a learning experience that I needed at the time. It was a decisive body check into my ego and a roundhouse kick into my arrogance. And who knows? With the Mario movie doing so well, perhaps we really could see Spyro on the big screen sometime in the future. A huge thank you to Skijarma, Mundi, Shadow Sean, and Rykenator for taking the time to share their stories about Frixion, Mark for editing, and Mel for the thumbnail art. As always, if you are new, don't forget to subscribe for more casual gaming content, and I will see you next time. Until then, this is Miharu, signing off.